Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial on creating a Windows Form application using the .NET Framework. Um, before we get started, please install Visual Studio uh, 2019 or it could be 2022 and make sure it is the Community Edition. So once you have installed that, uh, please, oh yeah, and also install the uh, .NET uh, uh, library so that we can um, create a .NET Framework project. So once you have done all that, please hit create a new project. And here we should be finding the Windows Form app for the .NET Framework. If it isn't already here, you can search it or scroll for it. And I believe it should be right here. There it is. So make sure you select this one here. Um, when I first started out, I selected this one here. And the difference is, it's this is .NET Core. And this is, of course, .NET Framework. So once you've done that, let's click Next. Let's name the project. We can name it Tutorial Project. And create it. Once you've created your project, it'll bring you this form here. And this is where we can, we're looking at the UI side or the front end um, of our application. So if we run this right now, we will see that we get an empty form. And we can put many things on this form. We can put UI elements in which they call controls in the .NET framework, which are basically text boxes, radio buttons, date, time, pickers, we can do all that kind of stuff. There's so many different things you can use, and I haven't even used all of them myself. So if you want to find all these, you just go over to the toolbox, and voila, they're right here. here they call them common controls. And we got labels, we got list views, we got buttons, we got all kinds of stuff here. Um, so let's just make a simple like, application. I'm going to plug in this heater. So maybe we want to like grab the uh, user input on their first name, their last name, maybe gender, and we want a button for submission. So to do this, we can just drag the UI elements or controls onto our form. So here we got text box. We can just click and we can drag it on here. And we can keep doing this again. We can drag another text box for the last name. Put it there. Maybe we want some radio buttons for gender. Maybe like male, female, or other. We can move that here. There's one. Um, there's two. And to even make this move faster, we can just select one of these and hit Control C. And then select the form and hit Control V and it'll make another button for us. There we go. So we got radio buttons here for gender. We got two text boxes for first name and last name. And lastly, let's make a button here. So here we got a button. We can just drag this here. And if you want to resize buttons, as you can see, there's uh, eight like little places you can drag. Um, it'll just make the button bigger. So we can just do this, that. There we go. We got a nice little button there. And we can also group items together. So maybe we can, maybe not so much text boxes, but we could. But we can definitely group these radio buttons together since there are options. So if you want to do that, we can go over here and we can type in group box. And of course that groups things together. So if we drop that there, we can um, we'll just put it up here first and kind of make it like a little bit smaller. And then we're just going to, if you just click and drag over all this, it'll select them all, and we can just drag these in here, just like that. And there we go, we got options. And maybe we wanna like make it a little smaller, just for it to be a little tidy. So far we have two text boxes, we got radio buttons, and we got a button. But they're they're really they really don't say much to us. I mean we got radio button one, we got radio button two, we got radio button three, and this button one. We don't know it's for submission. 
or a regular user wouldn't know it's for submission. And we got two text boxes that don't really have anything saying what they are. So in order to do this, we can just go over the toolbox again and we can put a label with them. So here we go. We got a nice little label here we can put and we can just hit control C and another label that goes up or there. And as you can see, I kind of laid these out weirdly. Um, this label matches up with this text box fine. It looks pretty level with the text box, but this one over here is mm, not so much. So we could use, uh, once we have selected the label here, we can use our up and down arrow keys to move it around and more in a more precision fashion. So here we go. Uh, we can move it right here and kind of just guess. Or what we could do is we can hold control key and then hit our up and down arrows. And as you can see, we get a little line here. And this line will help us line it up with the text box. So there we go. There we got one kind of lined up a lot better. And we had a blue line that popped up to help us guide us. So over here, let's make sure this label's pretty level here. And there we go. It wasn't. It was slightly a little bit off. And we could tell because we had that line. So there we go. Now we can also select both of these elements and make sure they're level with the other ones and they are. All right, so now we got labels that can help us and we got, uh, like I said, radio buttons and the button. All right, so label one is still not very helpful. So if we go over here to the properties, we can change this, uh, the text property, which is located right here. And we can change label one to first name. And there we go. We got first name there. Nice. All right. We can do the same thing for label two. We can go over there, click it, hit the text property, and we can hit or type in last name. And there we go again. Radio buttons. We can do the same thing. We can go over here, text, and basically we'll just say mail. And we can also just hit or click the next radio button and not even have to worry about clicking the properties or the text property. We can just click it and it should automatically go right to the text since it already knows that we want, we edited the text before. So we just type in uh, female. And as you can see, I didn't even touch the property, the text property over in the box. I just clicked this one and it worked. So that's just a neat little feature, so you're not always clicking over in the properties. If you have already clicked it previously, you don't have to worry about it again. All right, and we'll do other. There we go. That makes a lot more sense. And now for the, the submit button, we need to change that to submit. And this one also allowed us to defaultly go to the text property, and we can just hit enter. Sometimes this, always, this doesn't always work if you have different controls. So we could add a different control and sometimes that'll mess it up. And the group box, the group, the group box needs change too. So we'll just change this to options. All right. So where we got a nice little form going on here. So if we hit start, there's our form. We can type in maybe John. I'm going to do the default programmer name or whatever, whatever you want to call it, John Smith. And we can select mail and we can hit submit. And the submit button doesn't actually do anything yet. We're just on the front end of everything, but we got a nice little form going on. So sometimes in our forms, we like the tab. Let's see how our tabs are doing. We can tab there. We go from first name, last name, and we totally skip, uh, skip over the options. And a lot of people like the tab through their forms. So we need to get the tabbing in order and tabbing comes, becomes very important in programming sometimes as well, because you can actually uh, find the next control based on the tab index, but maybe we'll do that later. But for this tutorial, we're just going to look at the properties here. So to change uh, the tab order, we have to, uh, we can view it in the properties again. So here we're at tab index seven for label one. 
and that really should be one, right? Our next tab would be this one, which is two. Then we can do this one, three. Then this one, four. Oh, see that changed the text there because we're in a different control. So we didn't automatically go to the right uh, property. So there we go. One, two, three, and we need to put this as four. All right, so the reason why we're not getting the radio buttons is because we got this group box around it, and the group box tab index is wrong as well. So if we click the group box, we can see that the tab index is six, which is not right. We need to change this to five, and inside, we need to change these to the correct tab index. So once we have this one is five, we then go inside, and we, select, we make these uh, higher than the number five. So we got six seven and we got eight and now for the submit button we got nine there we go and now if we start this we should be able to go straight into the radio buttons so tab we're in last name there we go we're inside the box and you can use your arrow keys to select the correct fill once you're done with that it'll take you right to the submit and you can hit enter or you can actually just click it. Perfect, we got our tab order even, even done here. So, next thing we probably should do is rename this form. We don't really like form one. So select the form, you can go down here to the text, and then we can just change this to whatever title we want it to be. There we go. And maybe we, we should also add like a little label here. So I already entered in a little label and Maybe we want this to be, uh, let's call this, let's call this uh, user login form. So text, we can type in user login form. Or register, let's do register. User register form. There we go. And let's get that capital letter out of there. All right, so everything's looking good, except I rather change this label up here to a bigger font. So if we go up here, we can select font. And as you can see, we have Microsoft. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Microsoft Sans Serif, and we have 7 point, 7 point, 8 point. So we can select that little uh, three dotted thing over here, and it'll bring us to this. And we can pick whatever we want. So I'm going to see if we have um, Times New Roman. Yeah, we do. Perfect. We, we got that. We can do regular, bold, and we can change the size. So let's change that to 16. Okay. There we go. You just use a register form. And now I'm going to hold control in my arrow keys. And I'm going to kind of make this a little bit more centered. There. Looks pretty good. So now we got a decent looking form and we got tabs working. We got fonts we're using and you can also change colors. So we could change this color to, which is, it's called four color here. We could change it to anything. We could change it to active border, user register form. And that, that just doesn't seem like a cool color. So I'm probably just going to stick with, uh, I don't know. Just stick with black here. There we go. I selected black. And there we go. We're kind of back to where we were before. All right. So, yeah, we got a button. We got first name, last name. We got all this cool stuff. So, next thing we can do is uh, go to the back end. 